Welcome to J is for Justice podcast. If live breaking news and following true crime is your thing, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like what you see in my videos, please consider giving them a thumbs up. Hey guys, welcome back to J is for Justice for a timeline overview of the Samuel Olson case out of Houston, Texas. I'm going to give people a few minutes to join before we get started. Um, I'm sorry, I was a few minutes late. I got a little excited. I Anybody has stock in Moderna, it just jumped like $25 a share. Anyways, how are you guys? Hello, Lunice. Hello, Bugs Life. Please keep your video off if you are in bed with ice, eating ice cream and Lunchables. <laughs> um, we did just watch a quick hearing of Teresa Balboa, who is the suspect in this case, and her bond was lowered. And she is she is only being charged right now with tampering with evidence. Um. We're expecting when the autopsy results do come back that there will be more charges um, she will be facing. So I wanted to kind of, you know, just start from the beginning because I've seen bits and pieces of different interviews with different family members. And I'm like, what does all this mean and what is going on? different family members whoops okay hey lisa welcome back oh no bugs life said she brought enough ice cream for the entire chat <laughs> all right let's give it a few minutes you guys we're gonna go over this case timeline no her her bond was five hundred thousand And it was reduced to 100,000. And if you look at this, if this, uh, oh, you mean from the prior case? Okay, I gotcha. I gotcha, Nikki. Um, but if you look at this slideshow, there are a couple of pictures of her from 2019. She looks a lot different. COVID did not do well for these folks. So I don't know what they got up to over the past couple years, but it definitely took a toll on her looks. That is the bio mom right there um, with Sam and the little Ron John shirt. That is his bio mom, Sarah. Oh, he's, he's gorgeous, he's gorgeous. So then there was a picture of bio or paternal grandmother and son, and then Teresa and father Dalton. Yeah, Lisa, you're right. That's what you heard. That's correct. She was on she was out on bond for strangling Dalton. I think that's where the strangling came into place. I think I misunderstood. Someone said she strangled Dalton, and I think I misinterpreted that as she strangled Samuel. <clears throat> so I apologize for that. That was my mistake. Bridget Servi 319. How are you, my lady? I haven't followed the cash case, Bridget, but this one caught me and I don't know. I think it was because I saw the paternal grandmother's interview first. And being a grandma myself, my heart broke for her. And I was like, what happened to this boy? And it, it made me look into it more. Make sure that you um, put your chat on live chat, you guys, so you get the most recent um, chat. Switch it from top chat to live chat. Lisa says Houston jails have been overflowing and they have been charging and releasing and early releasing 
to help relieve the stress on the system. Yeah, that's happened in a lot of places, but I know this particular area has a lot of crime. It's a huge area. Um, so yeah, so while we were away for the half hour, I did um, muster up some interviews. I have interviews with Teresa Balboa, one of her her ex, who she has two children with, I believe. He has an interview out there. There is um, the paternal, paternal grandmother. And then there's also interviews with Dalton, the father. Hey, it, baby D. I am a grandma. I'm a grandma. Sam reminds me of a child actor. He does. He's got that full head of hair. He's just adorable. I'll have to look into the cash case. I haven't, I have a hard time following these kid cases. Um, and I think that's why I didn't want to like dive into that one. But then I saw this interview with this grandma and that was what captivated me. And now I have to follow it through, you know? So, all right, let's get started. If some of you didn't make it back from the last live, you guys can replay. I also have this set to DVR so you can rewind as well. Be kind and rewind, folks. Okay, so first off, we are going to go to our first spot in our timeline. And this is going to take us back to 2019. In 2019, Teresa Balboa, who is the suspect in this case, was a no-show in child custody court for her own two little girls. December 12th of 2019, to be exact, she didn't even show up. So here's a video that correlates to this information. Breaking. Our team coverage continues now with KPRC2 investigator Joel Eisenbaum live in Southwest Houston. And Joel, first on two tonight, you have learned new information about Teresa Balboa. Yeah, guys, really, I'm just a few miles away from the studio here in Southwest Houston. This is the Braze Timbers neighborhood, and Teresa Balboa knows this subdivision well. In fact, today, I talked to the woman who is now raising Balboa's children. Teresa Balboa, the woman now at the center of the disappearance and death investigation of six-year-old Samuel Olson, her boyfriend's son, is in fact a mother herself. KPRC2 investigates found she has at least two children, but does not have custody of them. Well, I tried to help her for many years. You tried to help her? Yeah. This woman, who we are not identifying by name, is a relative. She now has custody of two of Balboa's kids, Healthy and seemingly happy six- and eight-year-old girls. Wasn't always that way. In court records, their father painted a dire home life. Quote, things had gotten so bad between Teresa and I, and we couldn't get along. It became an onslaught of verbal and physical abuse between the both of us towards each other. I know she wasn't taking good care of them. She wasn't born to be a mom. In fact, when the day came for a court to decide who would watch the kids... Teresa Balboa was a no-show. From the get-go, you were concerned about Teresa's parenting. Yeah. Because it was lifestyle. obvious she wasn't a mother. Given the circumstances, we didn't think it appropriate to put Balboa's children on TV today, but I did meet them, and they do seem happy, healthy, and in good care. We're live in Southwest Houston tonight. I'm Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC 2 News. Thank you, Joel. There Elite Care ER is not your typical local health clinic. We are an emergency room that is ready to help.
Okay, I think I turned that off. Um, so here, this this girl, Teresa Balboa, lost her two girls in 2019. And I know they didn't identify this woman um, in this video, but since then, her son, the father of the two girls, has come out of the woodwork. And he did a interview and we're going to watch him right now because um, his response to what she's done is pretty interesting being that, you know, they were a couple. They have two children together and his mother is raising those girls. So it says something about him, too, as well, in my opinion. But here we go. For the first time, the father of Balboa's two daughters is revealing new insight into her troubled past on the ABC 13's Jessica Willie. And Jessica, he told you that this situation scares him? Yeah, Alex Rizzo says Teresa Balboa, the one he knew, was a good mother. He admits their relationship was unhealthy, sometimes even abusive. But while he says he's on a better path, she's in jail. To know that somebody I loved cared for did that to a child, it, it hurts. It scares me. There was a time when Alex Rizzo knew Teresa Balboa the best. They were together for at least 10 years. She is the mother of his two daughters. I've known that girl for a long time, and I know that she's had problems. I know that she's had a difficult life, but you never think, I would never have thought something of this magnitude would ever happen. Alex says they broke up four years ago. It was far from amicable. He moved to North Dakota and then Oklahoma for work. Two months ago, he reached out to her to see if she needed help. Well, I'm in the position that I'm in. Let me help you do better so that we can, our kids can have our, their parents. And she went MIA. In 2019, Teresa lost custody of their children. She didn't even show up to court. They are now being raised by their grandmother, little girls eight and six years old, big, big, big. around Samuel Olson's age. All I've thought about since since I found out about it is is my kid in that poor, my children in that poor that poor little boy, like to be dragged around in a bag in a box as if you're just a freaking trophy. That's that's. That kills me for that little boy. That kills me for that mother. That kills me for that father. If he had nothing to do with it, then, then that kills me for him as a dad. The 30-year-old says on either May 23rd or 24th, two weeks after, police now believe Sam had died. Teresa contacted him. She just called me out of nowhere and said, hey, is the offer to still come up there open? I told her, no, not anymore. And then she stopped replying. From what I've heard on the case, she had already done what she had did. And she had that little boy wherever she had him and was trying to use me to run away from it. Instead, according to court records, she turned to a male friend in San Jacinto County who helped her get to Jasper before giving her up. The 29-year-old, who also has a son from a previous relationship, remains in jail, accused in Sam's death. She's convicted of killing that child. I hope she gets the worst things that could possibly happen to her. That's a child and she's a mother. That little boy was younger than her, than my daughter is. I know that Teresa, the Teresa I knew at one point in time was a good person. Whatever she's become or whatever she's, whatever she is now, that, that's, that's not the Teresa that I was in love with at one point. That's a conversation that now I have to have with my kids one day as to why they won't have their mother again. That poor kid's mother will never have him back. And that kills me. Jessica Willie, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. All right, so that is Teresa Balboa's ex. They have two children together, and neither one of them had custody because she didn't show up to court. And he obviously wasn't fit to have them, so his mom has them. And they're only eight and six. The same age that little Sam was, six. With all of these people in this child's life, how did this happen? Baby D, it was already um, the court hearing. We already streamed it.
It was very quick. The only thing they did was lower her bond. Amanda Vida, what's up, girl? I see Amanda Vida and Baby D are getting acquainted in chat. Babe, hit it, Baby D. He was five. Yeah, because his birthday came. Okay, so let's get on with the timeline. All right, so we have Teresa Balboa in 2019 losing custody of her kids. She didn't even fight for him. She didn't even show up. Okay, so she lost custody of those two girls. Then she has his boyfriend, Dalton, and he has a son that's six. And they're going through, Sarah is the bio mom, and apparently they're going through some kind of a custody deal. I don't know the ins and outs of that. I do have someone that is going to come on with me this week, and she has all the ins and outs, all the documents. Um, so everything is going to be factual. We're going to have all of the court documents from Dalton and Sarah. And we'll be showing those on screen. Okay. So moving forward, she gets her kids taken away. Her ex is, ex's mother has them. Okay. So now we have fast forward because I don't want to get into the Sarah Dalton thing because I don't have all the facts. Let's fast forward to the last time that someone says they saw little Samuel and that person is his bio or his paternal grandma, his bio dad's mother says she was the last to see him. Now let's see where we are. I want to play that video for you guys. This is crazy case. There's it, just trying to get a timeline together was like finding just finding news stuff. Okay. So April 30th, Houston police said that's the last verifiable because we have the paternal grandmother saying she saw him. But on April 30th, he was seen at school. Okay, so the school confirmed he was there on April 30th. On May the 2nd is when Tanya Olson, who is Sam's paternal grandmother, she said she saw him on May the 2nd. So this is a quote from Tanya. She says, and to clear up the rumor that no one has seen Sam since April 30th is a lie. I just provided you guys with pictures and dates. And this, she said this on June 1st. Okay. He was with us. Dalton is not a bad father and he would never harm that baby and loves him to death. He would die for him. Okay, so let's take a look at the paternal grandma. And this is raw whole video. It's about 12 minutes long. And this is the first video that I saw about this case. And this video took place on June the 1st. So keep that in mind as you watch. All right, let me get it up here. And this is Dalton's mom. And his dad is also, also there. All right, let's take a look here. He is the sweetest, kindest, most loving child. He's so smart. Um, he loves dinosaurs. He can tell you which ones are herbivores and carnivores. And he puts them in the hibiscus trees and lets them eat. And he loves Buzz Lightyear and Woody and Forky. And uh, <laughs> he's got a really funny personality and he jokes about my name because I'm his egg <laughs> we 
we just need information on anybody that knows anything to please contact HPD or Equisearch, Tim. They're all working very hard. This case is very confusing, like HPD said last night. There's conflicting stories. They're sorting out those issues at the moment. The last person Sam was seen with was with Teresa Balboa. Um, last night, I know you guys are all aware of this because we just found out last night and we are devastated. We can't find her now. So this is turned. The most important thing is anybody who knows where she's at to please contact HPD. Teresa, if you're watching this, you need to contact HPD. If you're telling the truth, you have God on your side. My son and all of us know nothing. We are shocked. We are devastated for everybody involved. And to clear up that rumor that nobody's seen Sam since April 30th is a lie. I just provided you guys with pictures with dates. He was with us. Dalton is not a bad father. He would never harm that baby. He loves him to death. He would die for him. And if you're a parent, you understand what he's going through right now. And the possibility of trusting someone you thought you knew could do this. We have to have answers. Now, whether the other family's involved, I don't know. But whoever it is, this is Sam. He, he just turned six. We didn't even get to spend his birthday with him. And I would like anybody out there to donate to Equisearch because they have been truly amazing through all this. Tim and everyone, all the searchers, they need supplies, y'all. They need Gatorade, they need water, they need off, they need towels, anything that you guys can provide out there when you know that we're going to do another search for Sam. Please just drop something off. Um, for those people that are taking their time and have to do this kind of thing. So when's the last time you saw him? May 2nd is the last time I physically had my hands on Sam. And his guess is he was getting sick? Yes. And we're not going to go into that. We're going to let the detectives sort all that. He said, she said, crap, Ola out. Um... She has been with us since day one, and she, she has been helping search. She has, from Friday, she's been in with investigators um, several times. She's given up her phone, my son. We've all given up. We've all been interviewed. Um, so now we don't understand what's going on. Uh, we just need to get to the bottom of this for Sam. We need to know where he is, that he's safe, and he's coming home. Yesterday at 4.15. Yes. He is devastated. No. No. She was on the other side of the road handing out flyers. Dalton went down the other side, and that was it. Uh, you'd have to ask Dalton. Everything's just a blur right now. But Dalton has seen and talked to Sam. So that's another thing. Uh, they're trying to pinpoint dates down. So, again, any information, anybody that may have saw something uh, and not realized it, um, just notify HPD. None of this makes any sense. None of it. Again, I want you to talk to detectives about this because the statements have already been made. Um, I don't want to say something that would mess up their investigation. It's very important. Um, 
because they are doing everything they can to figure this mess out. So please, if you're going to report something, make sure it's correct. Make sure I've been quoted saying that I had custody. I never said that. So again, this stuff is very important because people are watching what you guys are doing. And they're, they're muddying the waters for detectives, which means they're going on false leads, wasting time and energy and resources on stuff that does and even pertain to this. So that is my main thing today and every day is going to be we get the right news out there at the right time so detectives don't have to spend 10 minutes on something when they can be spending minutes on Sam. And how often does Sam stay with his mom? Sam hasn't been with his mom since January of last year. 2020? Yes. And why is that? Again, I'm not discussing any of the details of that. We can't. We can't indulge anything. Was this a custody issue at all in May? I cannot discuss any of that again. Um, like I said, it really doesn't even matter what happened before. We have to find Sam now. And that is our, our biggest thing. That's the goal. That is our goal. As a grandmother, could you speak to somebody out there? Obviously, somebody's seen something, they know something, maybe they, they're, they're keeping information in themselves. Can you speak to that one person out there that really can help crack this case for investigators and bring As a mom. And as a grandma, if you know anything or you think your child is capable of this, you need to sit them down and pray with them and make them do the right thing. I know it's hard to have to think that you love somebody and somebody could do something. But we need to know and you need to face whatever consequences for your actions. Do you think Sam's in danger of reading between the lines there? I think this is now bumped up. Why do you think that Teresa is now bumped up? I don't know. And I'm not going to speculate. I'm just going to let the detectives do what they have to do. And that's what Dalton and all of us are doing. Your son says Teresa loves Sam. Yes, she does. She's been very good to Sam. Does flashcards with him, takes him to the beach, plays with him. Bring Sam home. Just bring Sam home. This can't go on anymore. We need to know where he is. Where he is and that he's safe and that he's good. And that way he can have a birthday party. And he spent a lot of time with her, right? I'm not getting into any more of that. Like I said, I've given you everything I can give you. Again, talk to detectives. Again, I am not going to get into this because we don't know what the detectives are working on. We don't want to give any information out that somebody may run, somebody may uh, leave town, uh, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, we don't want to even speculate on anything. Just let the detectives do what they have to do. What do you know for sure? Like you, where Sam was, who he was with, what do you know for sure? I think the detectives need to give you that stuff because, again, I don't want to put any false information out there that... That's, that's just a, it's a better question to ask Dan. Did you have any plans for his birthday on Saturday? Yes, we did. What were you going to do? We were going to have a party here at the house for him. But if it was going to rain, we were going to go to pizza. And what do you want to say to Sam? Dang loves you, baby. 
Uncle Why Why loves you. Papa loves you. Daddy loves you. I know your mommy loves you. I know that your your Mimi loves you. I know all your aunts and uncles and cousins and everybody loves you and misses you. And we're gonna see you soon, honey. I promise. I promise, Sam. I promise. I'll never give up. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. Wow. That that breaks my heart, you guys. That's that's tough to watch for me. Cub, I did not know that. I think she realizes it, but it hadn't been confirmed. I just can't imagine what she must have been like when she got that confirmation. That's all I meant. Okay, so next we're going to move on to um, the next video, which follows the mother here, the mother of Dalton. And we're going to watch Teresa Balboa. And this is her speaking out when Sam was missing. Well, first, I'm going to give you your live radar. No, I'm just kidding. Here we go. Oh, that face. In fog, 68, south at 6. Mineral wells. And, and we're going to continue to search until we find him. What do you think? Elsewhere, Where do you think it could be? Wichita Falls, cloudy, 68. Somewhere with... Calm. Abilene, cloudy, 73, east at 14. Not with Waco, us. cloudy, 80, and south at 10. Tyler, that's what... 81, that's the important thing is that he's not with us and we need to bring him back to Once us. Once again at 10 a.m., DFW Airport. I can't... A thunderstorm, 69, north at 10. Now let's check on your local forecast for the Dallas Fort Worth. Wait, we, we have an issue. Houston, we have a problem. Today, we have two two things playing at once. Highs in the mid Let me track down what what's South playing because it's somebody. Houston, you're getting your uh, local forecast. Tonight, mostly cloudy with a forty percent chance of showers and thunderstorms. I've got so many different windows open. Lows in the lower seventies. For all these different South interviews, okay, here it is. To Ten miles an hour. Actually, it's Florida's weather. But anyways, okay, here we go. Let's go back to her. And we're going to continue to search until we find him. What do you think? Where do you think he could be? Somewhere with... Not with us. And that's what... That's the important thing is that he is not with us and we need to bring him back to us. So I can't, I can't say where he could be, where he might be, like... Because honestly, we, we don't know. At this at this point, we, we don't know. We can all we can do is keep searching and doing you know everything we've been doing, and we're gonna continue to do it. You think he's definitely alive? Oh yeah. Uh, we just keep picturing him sitting and watching cartoons, waiting for us. Just sitting there waiting for us, and we're gonna get him. We're gonna find him. Tell me about your relationship. Did he call your mom? Did he? I mean, or at least super mommy. That was his choice. It, not, it wasn't for us. We didn't, we didn't force him because 
I'm like, I don't want to like force that, but you know, he used to call me Super Mommy or Teresa, you know, it was, it was still uncomfortable for him, you know, because, you know, he's, he's little, he's a kid and he, you know, he knows who his mom is, his mom is, but he also knows that how much I care about him and everything that I've, that I've been doing for him and have done for him. So. We're gonna find him. I know we're gonna find him. Okay, that's super disturbing. Knowing now what she did with little Sam and watching her. I mean, I've never seen her talk before, so I don't know if she normally has like the smirky kind of look on her face, but she definitely has it there. Yes, just Joy. He was in the storage unit when she did that interview because I was thinking about it. I'm going to play it again, too. But I was thinking about it as I was watching it. As you're watching, I'm going to play it again. As you're watching it, listen to her and look at her body language when they ask where he could be, knowing that we know she put him in a storage unit in a bin after laying him in a bathtub for two days. We know that that's what she did. Now let's watch that one more time. We're going to continue to search until we find him. What do you think? Where do you think he could be? Somewhere with... Not with us. And that's what... That's the important thing is that he is not with us and we need to bring him back to us. So I can't I can't say where he could be, where he might be, like because honestly, we we don't know. At this at this point we, we don't know. We can all we can do is keep searching and doing, you know, everything we've been doing. And we're gonna continue to do it. You think he's definitely alive? Oh yeah. We just keep picturing him sitting and watching cartoons waiting for us. Just sitting there waiting for us. And we're going to get him. We're going to find him. Tell me about your relationship. Did he call your mom? Did he, I mean, or at least... Super and mommy. That was his choice. It, not, it wasn't for us. We didn't, we didn't force him because I'm, like, I don't want to, like, force that. But, you know, he used to call me super mommy. Or Teresa, you know, it was it was still uncomfortable for him, you know, because you know he's he's little, he's a kid, and he you know he knows who his mom is, his, his mom is, but he also knows that how much I care about him, and everything that I've that I've been doing for him and have done for him. So we're gonna find him. I know we're gonna find him. Wow. That's all I can say. The looking off. And then how about her first answer to the reporter's question? Do you have any idea where he could be? He's somewhere off with. Then she looks down and she pauses. And then she looks up at the camera and says, not with us. Very strange answer. I am pretty sure they were on to her then. Pretty sure investigators saw that and uh, pretty sure they talked to her before then. But yeah. Yeah, Cub, they do. They have very weird behavior as behaviorisms, weird um, mannerisms. 
but the way she did that, somewhere off with, like, what was she going to say? Yeah, I can't say where he is. That's telling, too. Crazy. Okay, so after this, now we are going to watch. Hang on, I got to pull it up. Okay, so Tim Miller from Equisearch confronted this girl. And now we're going to hear from Tim Miller. Love Tim Miller, by the way. Much, much, much respect for Tim Miller. Broken beyond repair. That's how Samuel Olson's maternal grandmother describes her feelings today as both sides of the boy's family react to new developments in this case. Jason Miles is live from where suspect Teresa Balboa was last known to live with more on this. Jason. Yeah, this is that apartment complex you just mentioned near Webster. We're kind of in southeast Houston. I'm told this is where Teresa Balboa kept little Samuel, her current boyfriend's child, with her ex-boyfriend. It's all kind of complicated, but Texas EquiSearch founder Tim Miller says he was always skeptical of Balboa's story. Texas EquiSearch helped look for six-year-old Samuel Olson despite founder Tim Miller's gut feelings. I was not very optimistic this child was ever going to be found. He said that became more clear following conversations with the boy's father's girlfriend, Teresa Balboa, who was charged today in connection with the case following last night's discovery of what's believed to be little Samuel's body. I told her, I said, I'm so damn disappointed in you. I said, you know what, every word you said on there is a lie. And uh, that's when things started, st started unraveling, I think. So Miller said it was difficult from the beginning, pinning down the last time family members saw Samuel. The last person Sam was seen with was with Teresa Balboa. Including the boy's father and paternal grandmother, with whom we spoke yesterday, and who Miller was with following news that a body was found. I was with that family until about 1230 after midnight, and uh, uh, it was devastating being over there last night, seeing Dad going through all the pain and grief and everything he was going through. And Miller has his own theories about what happened to Samuel and believes the investigation is far from over. There was an ongoing custody dispute between Samuel's mother and father and his father actually had a restraining order against Teresa Balboa, the woman now charged in connection to the case. Certainly just, a, as I mentioned, a complicated situation and a very sad and tragic ending for this little young man. Back to you. Yeah, so many confusing details here, but just a heartbreaking situation. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Go Tim. Love Tim. Um... He told her, you're lying. Everything that's coming out of your mouth is a lie and I'm disappointed in you. And he said that's when everything began. So interesting to say that he thinks at that point the investigation is just beginning. So it doesn't sound like Tim, you know, made any comments from what we could see about the dad other than he was with the family when they found little Sam and he said that, you know, seeing the dad go through that pain was heart-wrenching. <laughs> really, Amanda? That's great. That's great. I'm 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 sure he saw right through him, you know. Jimmy May, what's your question? I just see a question mark. I didn't see you ask anything.
All right. So the next point in our timeline. Okay. So let's go back to our actual timeline here. Start closing down things as we go through them. I've got so much open. There's so much to this case. Okay. So on May the 10th, here, okay, so May the 2nd, we're back. Paternal grandmother made the plea, said she, you know, saw him on May 2nd. And then on May 10th, charging documents revealed that the roommate of the six-year-old father's girlfriend, Teresa Balboa, told investigators that he was called by Balboa on May 10th and was told that Samuel was dead. The roommate said he left for work and later returned and found Samuel lying on the bed, unresponsive. He noticed bruising on the child's body. The roommate said he and Balboa placed the body of the child in the bathtub where he remained for two days. Roommate needs to be in jail. You might have missed a little bit. Jimmy, we just went over like the very beginning of when Teresa lost her kids. And um, now we're on May 10th, so you haven't missed much. Right? I mean, where is the roommate? Do we know? Is the roommate arrested? We know the roommate came forward, but that's all we know. There are many culpable people here. I agree, Orly. Okay, so let's go to May 13th. Oh, so after poor Sam laid in the bathtub for two days, the roommate said that he bought duct tape and a plastic tote from Walmart and that he and Balboa wrapped Samuel's body in a plastic sheet, placed it in, the, in a tote bag, and put the body in his vehicle. And then he and Balboa drove to a storage unit located at 16650 Highway 3 in Webster, Texas. What is the roommate's name? I don't know the roommate's name. If I can find if I know the name, I can try to find him. Oh my god, Bugs Life, good point. Two days, no showers. Oh, I'm sure the storage unit has cameras. I'm thinking maybe the the roommate is helping investigators and maybe that's why he hasn't been arrested. It's Ben something. Does anybody know his last name? Ben something? Ben Benjamin Rivera. You guys want to see? Let me see if I can find him. All righty. Let's see. I just cannot believe that. This guy helped her do this. He's got to be on drugs, too. I mean, he can't live with her and not. What city was that in that they lived in the apartments? What city were those apartments in, you guys? Was it Webster? True, Alexandra. True. Webster? Okay. It'll just be easier for me to find his ass if I know. Okay, so Benjamin Rivera is 47 years old. Quite a bit older than her. 
How old is Miss Teresa? <clears throat> I know she's not in her 40s. Um, it looks like Benjamin Rivera has some criminal history here. Let's see. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, he's got an older record from the 90s. Nothing recent. Um, he works in heating and cooling. And he has an old record from the 90s for failure to stop and give info, um, assault, causing bodily injury. That was back in 97, though. But he has been in trouble in Harris County in the 90s. So, um, let's see. I'm trying to find his social media here. Oh, Lord. He's got Twitter. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to look at it. Hi, Alex. All right. I think this is him, you guys. But he doesn't show his whole face. If this is the wrong guy, I don't want to get in trouble, but this is who came up for me. And Dylan Walker is the friend who gave her a ride. Okay, so we're not to that yet. So right now we have the roommate, and we believe this is him, that he came home, saw little Samuel dead on the bed, helped her put him in the tub. He stayed in the tub for two days. Then this dude went to Walmart and bought duct tape and a bin to put him in and then helped her load him into the vehicle. I believe. I'm not sure if he helped her load. Don't quote me on that part. But he did help her conceal the body and get that all ready to go wherever she was planning on taking him. So it looks like Benjamin has kids. Um, that picture is not available. Hmm. He just retweets crap. So that's what I came up with as far as he goes. I don't want to, you know, pound on that too much because I can't verify that that for sure is him. Um, but if it is, he drives a Hyundai. Hyundai? Hyundai? I don't know how to say that. Um, trying to see here his associates. These people kind of scare me, honestly. <laughs> They're really kind of scary. Um, he's had a lot of addresses. He's lived in quite a few places. Um, nothing for this year, though. Like, nothing past 2020 so i wonder when they moved in together like what the situation was if it was his place she moved in they get the place together you know what was the deal there um i do know he used to live on bay area boulevard in houston i don't think that's his current location but bay area boulevard for those of you that are local to the area i have no idea where that is and that's pretty much it on old ben okay so moving on moving on okay back to the timeline we have roommate saying you know he's helped her get get the body in a bin and all of that Then on May 27th was the day that Samuel was reported missing. And we're going to get to the dad now, okay? So we haven't had dad in the picture up until now. 
uh, May 27th was when he was reported missing. And Dalton, his dad, and the girlfriend, Balboa, which she's called the girlfriend in this article. I don't know if that was true at that time. Because she had attacked him late last year and was arrested. And he supposedly had a PPO on her. So they both report him missing and say the last time he was seen was that day, Thursday, May 27th, in southwest Houston. Balboa told authorities that Sam's mom, his biological mother, and a man dressed as a police officer came to her apartment and took Sam. So I think in her interview that we saw, she's kind of alluding to the fact that he's somewhere with, she was going to say the bio mom. That's what I think. Because now reading that her excuse was that Sam's mom and a guy that that was dressed up as a police officer came to her apartment and took him. May 28th, Texas, Texas EquiSearch posted a missing persons flyer on their Facebook. The post was detailed that Samuel was taken by an unknown male from a Southwest Houston home in the 8800 block of McCoy, Mc, McC, McAvoy, McVoy Drive, McAvoy Drive at 7.30 a.m. on May 27th. Sorry if I hacked that. I don't want to say it. Um, he posted that Friday, May 28th. So the 8800 block of McAvoy Drive. Let me look that up right quick. Lisa discovers. Okay, but it says McAvoy Drive. I'm pulling up a map right now. Um, let's see what's at that location. Let me let me gray hues it for a minute. J hues it. I'm gonna J hues it on Google Earth or Google whatever. Um. Oh, no, no, no. This is where the school was, Lisa. You're right. Okay. The gateway at Ellington is the apartments. The last place he was seen was at school. So if you look, he went to the McNamara Elementary School. So that's what they're talking about. Okay, got you. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Okay, so that was the last time he was seen at school. Let's go back to the timeline. Um, and that was posted by Texas EquiSearch. On May 29th, the Houston Police Department issued a missing persons flyer around 11 a.m., so let's watch. I have a video on that. This is the very first press conference that the police did um, looking for Sam. This is Larry Satterwhite. I'm the executive assistant chief over field and support operations. With me is Assistant Chief Heather Morris over Criminal Investigations Command. So why are we here? We are looking for Samuel Dalton Ronald Olson. He's a six-year-old child just turned, and we are looking everywhere we can to find him. Uh, I'll tell you what we know uh, and that I can share. On Thursday, uh, May 27th, in the evening time around 6 p.m., Hold on, hold on. Call and South taken by another individual. Officers went to that location, 
started taking information from the individuals there that made the call about Samuel being taken. From there, the reports went in to our missing persons unit and we started looking for Samuel. We didn't know what we had. We didn't know if we had a child custody issue. We could still have that or anything else more nefarious. We just don't know or if we were even getting the accurate information. But this is how we conduct our investigations. We started talking to everybody that has any connection to little Sammy, in turn, little Samuel, in terms of where his caretakers, any, any relatives, and everyone else. And we're still doing that today. We have located him yet. And no one seems to know where he is that we've talked to so far. Why are we here today? The apartment behind us is one of the last known locations that we are reported to have that Samuel, little Samuel was at. So this is why we were here today and going in and looking for anything possible that might lead us to his, to getting him back. I know that you, a lot of you saw that we had EquiSearch and officers in the field next behind us searching. It just goes to show you, we are looking everywhere, anywhere possible where a six year old child could be, or could have on his own or by any potential other party that might have, have him. So we're at this point, we just do not have a lot of information and we're asking you as the public to help us. If anybody knows where Samuel Olson is or has any information as to where he might be, to please call us. Call our missing persons unit at 832-394-1840 or just call 911 and then say what you have and we'll send a unit out to get that information. Our goal is to get him back well and safe and, and to get him back in the hands of people who love him and will take care of him. So with that, I don't, I, I'll stop there and I'll take any questions you have, but understand there's what I can say and what I can't say. The woman who um, apparently reported him being taken by someone on the 27th, is that woman now missing? We are still looking. Um, we have talked to all of those individuals, uh, even as much as earlier today. So we're still asking questions of everybody that might have involvement here or might know something. Uh, and at this point, I don't know specific where her whereabouts right now. I'm not willing to say she's missing. I'm just saying I don't know where she is at this moment. She, she has so the it's a little bit complicated, but the biological mother uh, and the biological father have joint custody and each has times with the child. Uh, so that's what we know by court records at this point. And I haven't get, been given any updates on that. We've, we've talked to all of the parties, and unfortunately, no one knows where the child is right now. Have you been able to figure out the last time someone actually saw him? All we have are reports. The last time we know for a fact where he was was his school, and that was April the 30th. So we are working very hard. Um, because there's a lot of reports of where he was and why he was where he was. And uh, we are trying to verify all of that information. Uh, and again, this is a complicated case, but we're trying to move with as much urgency as we can uh, to get him back safely. We just are, are still not where we need to be in terms of locating. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Patrick Lynch. I'm the public information officer. Okay, so it sounds like at that point in time, the cops were like, what in the hell's going on? We don't know where this kid was last seen. We don't know who had him last. They're trying to sort through all of this. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine the cluster. <sighs> okay, so thank you, Amanda. Amanda said, okay, so what I'm unclear about is where was Sam supposed to be? At whose house? We're unclear on that. But we do know that Teresa said that he was taken from her mother's home. Is that what I'm understanding?
Yeah, Robin, I don't I don't know. But is that what I'm understanding is that Teresa said he was taken from her mom's? Hey, Mike, drop it, mom. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the timeline. Maybe that will answer my question. Boy, okay. So that was the Houston Police Department. They had their, they issued the missing persons flyer May 29th. May 31st, Houston Police and Texas Equisearch started searching for the six-year-old at an apartment complex. Also on Monday, May 31st, Houston Police and members of the Forensic Crime Scene Unit executed a search warrant at an apartment where Samuel was staying over the last few weeks. Surveillance video showed a man and Balboa taking the tote bag from a truck into the hotel. The man who assisted Balboa said she called him for help on May 31st after being involved in an altercation. The man then stated that he was the one who tipped off Crime Stoppers after helping Balboa remove the container from the storage unit to the motel room on June the 1st. So she got two dudes involved. She got this Rivera dude involved, then she got this second guy involved. And I don't know his name, but he picked her up, took her to the storage unit to grab this bin that smelled like death, literally, and then took her to the hotel the, that she was later discovered at with the body. And then he called Crime Stoppers. He did the right thing. Unbelievable. If you guys uh, want to subscribe to Amanda Vita's channel, Amanda is a creator here. Um, giving you a little shout out there, Amanda. Okay, so June 1st, we have attorney Marco Gonzalez, who represents Samuel's bio mom, Sarah Olson. Um, he did a press conference on June the 1st and said Sarah hadn't had access to Sam since the last time she saw him in January of 2020. While he was speaking during the press conference, news broke that a child's body was found in a motel room in Jasper. So we are going to watch the attorney speak on this now. Hold on one second, you guys. We're going to watch it. Just We're going to watch it in a second. As soon as I find the dang thing. I had the wrong link pulled up. Hold on. Ah. I've never done a timeline this complicated live. Okay. Um... He seems like a nice guy, too. Just saying. I hope this isn't in Spanish. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to understand it. Hold on. Let's let's check first. Houston, a la comunidad latina de Houston y de todo Texas. Y por supuesto, también quiere celebrar. Eh, el Día de la Independencia de México, hoy, septiembre 16, el mes de la herencia hispana, comenzó ayer, septiembre 15, va hasta octubre 15, y estamos celebrando no solamente... I got a little delay, sorry, I gotta... It is in Spanish. Sorry, guys. All right, let me find the English version of that interview. Because I don't speak Spanish. She has not been charged with murder, Mad Donut. 
Um, they're waiting for the cause of death to come back. Why can I not find his interview now? All I can find is a photo. Hmm. You understood some? <laughs> Um, let me see here. Oh, gosh, are you serious? A neighbor heard a child screaming? <sighs> okay, so I have that video, but I can't find the video of the attorney. Why can I not find that? Oh, wait. Is this it? Hold on. Here's the video. This is three minutes. Here we go. Why isn't this playing? I need to shut some of these windows down, I think. I'm sorry for the delay, y'all. Hold on. I'm getting my shit together here. I just got entirely too many things open. Okay, so apparently she was caught on camera with this bin. Let's watch. And first here at five, a heartbreaking turn in the disappearance of six-year-old Samuel Olson. Houston police announcing today a body found in a motel last night is believed to be that of the young boy. It's a twisted and tangled story that we've been keeping you up to date with since Memorial Day. A woman is in custody, we are learning, and she is the boy's father's girlfriend charged with tampering with evidence. Our Maria Salazar joining us live now from HPD headquarters with the latest. That's right, Rashi and Jonathan. She's been identified as Teresa Malboa, and she was taken into custody yesterday at the motel near Jasper, like as you mentioned, where police believe that they have located this little boy's body. Now, police have said that this was a very challenging case from the beginning because there were so many conflicting stories. So here's a look at the timeline that led up to Balboa's arrest. Friday, April 30th, Houston police say that was the last day then five-year-old Samuel Olson was seen at school in Cyprus. That weekend, Sam's grandmother, Tanya Olson, says he was with her at her Santa Fe home. May 2nd is the last time I physically had my hands on Sam. Sam reportedly felt sick when his father, Dalton, came to pick him up. Dalton told Fox 26 Sam was sent to quarantine at his girlfriend's apartment in Webster because Sam and Dalton lived with a chronically ill family member in Cyprus. On April 27th, around 6 p.m., Dalton and Teresa Balboa report Sam is missing. Balboa reportedly told HPD she last saw him in the 8800 block of McAvoy in Houston. Mrs. Balboa told the officers on the scene that she was at the residence the morning, that morning at approximately 7 a.m. when she saw Samuel's mother with an unknown officer at the front of the residence. Ms. Balboa indicated that the officer told her that she would go to jail for kidnapping if she did not return Samuel to the mother. HPD report their investigation showed Sam's mother, Sarah Olson, did not leave her home that morning. May 29th, little Sam turned six. 
May 31st, EquiSearch volunteers searched the area around this apartment complex on Gulf Breeze Drive in Webster for signs of Sam. HPD say Balboa lived at this complex during the search. She disappeared. On Monday, the search warrant was executed by investigators, and the Houston Forensic Science Center collected evidence from that location. June 1st, a Crime Stoppers tip leads investigators to this motel room in Jasper. Jasper Police Department officers initiated contact at the motel with Ms. Balboa and eventually discovered the body of a young child. Ms. Balboa was taken into custody. And Houston police did add that they are speaking to multiple other people, including the boy's father, but they have not named him a person of interest so far. And the police say they're also looking for the motive and looking at surveillance video to see how the little boy ended up at that motel room in Jasper. Reporting live from HPD headquarters in downtown Houston, Maria Salazar, Fox 26 News. Okay, so I was digesting that. So Sam was given to Teresa by Dalton because Sam was supposedly sick and Dalton and him lived with a chronically ill family member. Cyprus, where in cyprus is supposedly where dalton and samuel were living in cyprus with a family member i don't know if it's his parents or what oh my gosh wait scratches wait let me go back what are you guys talking about Oh, the scratches were one to two days after he passed? What is... Th I bet that was duct tape they heard, not scratching. Okay, so they sent him... <laughs> Alexandra. They sent him with Teresa to supposedly quarantine because he wasn't safe to go home because they lived with someone who was chronically ill. And I don't remember the date the cops said that, that that happened. I, I don't even know if they know. Okay, so according to reports on June the 1st, and this is the same day that they have the person coming forward that she called and said, hey, can you pick me, take me to the storage unit, blah, blah, blah. That was the same day. So officers were called to a Best Western Inn after he called he called Crime Stoppers. Must have been immediately. He did the right thing. And they were called to the Best Western Inn located at the 200 block of West Gibson Street in Jasper just before 6 p.m. Police Chief of Jasper, Gerald Hall, said the body of the child was found in a tote bag. So it was a tote bag, not a, a plastic tote. I've heard both. I don't know. Located in a room on the west side of the motel complex. He also said there were indications that a body had that the body had been there for some time. The grandfather is ill. Okay. But the neighbors heard a child screaming, you guys said? That was reported? Okay, so um, on June the 1st, the Houston police chief tweeted out that authorities believe the body of missing your six-year-old Samuel Olson was found. And then he also said that a possible suspect was taken into custody for questioning. That was on June 1st. During a press conference on Wednesday, June 2nd, Chief 
Heather Miller said the body found in Jasper is believed to be a missing six-year-old, but medical examiners were still working to confirm that. That was when she released that an anonymous tip to Crime Stoppers led police to the motel and that the, the missing boy's father's girlfriend, Teresa Balboa, was charged with tampering with evidence. She was arrested Tuesday night and transported to the Jasper County Jail. She was out on bond from an assault case in November. She was charged with assault with intent impeding breath. And Samuel's father, Dalton Olson, was the complainant in the case. Houston police said their interviews with Balboa are ongoing and Sam's father is someone they are talking to among several people. And as of June 2nd, police have had no motive yet in this case. So then they released her mugshot. And let me see. I have another video. Okay, here is the video from when they found Sam. God, all these ads. I can't. Okay. to this developing story in the case of a missing child, six-year-old Samuel Olson. Live look this morning from Jasper. That's where awaiting, we are awaiting a suspect in this case to be moved to Harris County today. Teresa Balboa, the girlfriend of Samuel Olson's father. She's the one who's charged with tampering with evidence in the case after a child's body was found in a Jasper motel room. Our Vincent Crivelli is live outside the Harris County Jail this morning with the latest. Vincent. Lisa, good morning. Right now, understandably, she's very emotional and says she needs time to process what happened, but says she's glad that Teresa Balboa is locked up. These images show a happier time in Samuel Olson's life. They were released by the attorney representing the boy's mother, Sarah Olson. I love you, bye-bye. If Samuel is deceased, this is her child after the identification process, that she feels 100% of the blame is on both, you know, Dalton you know, and uh, Teresa. Sarah Olson is waiting to identify the body of a child found in a Jasper motel who investigators say is likely her missing six-year-old son, Samuel. She just wants everybody to know that you know she's completely heartbroken she has not seen her son yet but it's a mother's intuition and she feels that um, that a, a boy that was found in Jasper is her is her son this feeling comes after Samuel's father Dalton Olson's girlfriend Teresa Balboa claimed that Sarah took Samuel back in her care with the man posing as a police officer she couldn't believe that story. You know, she was just, I mean, it was, it was outrageous. Now Balboa is in custody, but Sarah wants more. She also strongly uh, believes that Dalton, you know, the child's uh, father should also be in custody. Because Sarah says Dalton had Samuel. You know, since April 30th, then, and for him not to say anything or do anything, then um, obviously it, it seems like it, it was both of them orchestrating something. And for clarity, Dalton Olson is not facing any charges at this time. But again, Teresa Balboa is still in the Jasper County Jail where she faces a charge of tampering with evidence. Authorities say in the coming days she'll be extradited here to the Harris County Jail. For now, reporting live in Houston, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, 2 News. All right, Vincent, thank you. That attorney is so shook. 
Okay, so from what I'm gathering, Bio Mom was having a hard time getting her son. And you got to remember, <coughs> excuse me, this is through COVID. Hearings weren't exactly, um, you know, happening on schedule. Everything was pushed back. And I have to wonder if this was part of her problem in, in getting her son. My heart breaks for his mother. This is horrible. It sounds to me like Dalton and Teresa were playing games with the bio mom. And by the way, that's her on the screen right now. Very pretty girl. You're welcome, Alexandra. Thanks for being here. All right, so let's move on. So let's see. Let's continue with our timeline. So here we are on June 3rd. The child's body was taken from Jasper to the Harris County Medical Examiner's Office where an autopsy um, is being performed. June 4th, Teresa Balboa was brought back to Houston from Jasper. That was on Friday. She wasn't in court. We played that already. Um, and they set her bond at 500000 Her court-appointed attorney asked for 20000 Um, let's see. Okay, so whoever was saying there's a $600,000 bond, they were correct. So we have some breaking new news. Okay, so let's, not breaking new news, but this is the latest and greatest. And this is good video of her in court as well. We didn't get to see it quite so clear from our aspect. When it comes to airplane seats, size matters. Okay, apparently there was no sound on that clip. It was just her in court, I guess. So there she is. Mm. I wouldn't want to mess with that sheriff's deputy. Oops. That must be her court-appointed attorney. And girlfriend wears a size medium in, in prison orange. Okay, so we also have another video I'm going to show you. We're not quite done yet. Oh, we're getting there, though. We're getting, we're getting up to speed. All right, so then... Our next part in the timeline.
Hold on. I'm all discombobulated. Okay, so then we're at... I don't even know. I'm so lost. Um, okay, wait. I'm I'm seeing more about the bio mom. Okay, so um, okay, so the it says here that the boy's father also alleged that. The boy's mother took him. This is according to clicktohouston.com. I'm going to pull this up on my screen. Because I don't know if you guys have heard this. I've heard so many different conflicting stories. But it says here. That the boys, it says, moreover, while the boy's father alleges that the boy's mother took him. When Sarah Olson was questioned, she told investigators that she does not know of his whereabouts either. Um, and then Sarah's attorney said that his client had primary custody and was denied for many months from getting the child. And he also said that Sarah wanted him to speak so she could have a voice in this case. She's very emotional, stressed, and wants to know where her child is located. He also said the story that Balboa told investigators in the media was a lie and made up. Confirmed she hasn't seen her child in nearly a year. The attorney said Sarah hasn't been able to get in touch with Dalton or the grandmother. So she hasn't had much communication with Samuel. So Dalton and his mom were not responding to his mother? Am I understanding this right? So the, her attorney goes on to say that the father took Samuel and failed to return him. He said Samuel went two months without going to school before taken to another school in Jersey Village. So they switched to school. When Sarah and Dalton divorced, the custody agreement allegedly placed the child with the mother, which has not been modified since 2019. He said Sarah would initially exchange the child through the paternal grandmother, Tanya Olson. So Dalton's mom was denying this child to his mother, if this is correct. The attorney said Sarah is completely devastated and feels like the system and court have let her down. He said his client has been in cooperation with investigators, but does not feel comfortable talking to the media. He said Balboa's accusations implicating that she had something to do with her son's disappearance is false, saying there are too many holes in that story. Two months. And then they switched him to another school. But see, the timeline, it's like investigators probably are just putting all of this timeline together. I mean, how can we possibly process this timeline? You know, there's just a lot going on here in this poor little boy's life when all he needed was just a little bit of stability. Crazy. Okay. Um, here's another video. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's a couple good videos. Okay, let's let's watch these. This is from ABC thirteen.
Hey, it's a new day, people. It's finally time to make up for lost time. This is not the time for an ordinary birthday, and it's definitely not the time for an ordinary cake. Birthdays are back, and they're better than ever. So let's party. Ship treats nationwide at milkbarstore.com. These court records are providing a better timeline of the disappearance of little five-year-old Samuel Olson. All of this as we wait for the woman accused in his death, connected to his death, Teresa Balboa, to be transported from Jasper, Texas, here to Houston to face those criminal charges against her. Court records being made public today have filled in the timeline of five-year-old Samuel Olson's disappearance and death. His father telling investigators the little boy had been staying with his girlfriend, Teresa Balboa, at this Webster area apartment since April 30th, the last day he was seen in school. On May 10th, Balboa's roommate says she called him, saying the boy was dead in their apartment. The roommate left work and found the boy laying in a bed covered in bruises. They put him in a bathroom bathtub for two days. Today, this apartment near Webster now has a notice to vacate. On May 13th, duct tape and a storage tote were purchased by the roommate. He told investigators he helped Balboa wrap the boy's body in a plastic sheet, placed the child in the tote, then stored it at this storage facility in Webster. On May 27th, Samuel was finally reported missing. Balboa making up a story that he was kidnapped from her mother's home in southwest Houston. As a ground search began Monday, Balboa joined in, telling ABC 13. I can't, I can't say where he could be where he might be. Later that day on May 31st, the little boy's body was moved from the storage unit to Jasper, Texas. Investigators say Balboa called a friend. The two picked up the foul smelling tote and drove from Webster to Jasper that night where they checked into a Best Western hotel. Hours later on June 1st, that same friend called Crime Stoppers with a tip and police found Balboa inside the hotel room with the black tote the body of missing Samuel Olson inside. The boy's mother, father, and grandparents have said very little since his disappearance. They've declined to speak at all since the discovery of his body. Balboa remains in a Jasper jail waiting transfer to Houston to face her charges. Shelley Childers, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Okay, so the more I'm uncovering here, the more I'm thinking that there's a lot of people that are responsible here. There's a lot of people that are lying. There's a lot of people that are that are twisting the truth. And I don't like that Dalton's mom is enabling him. I don't like that. I my heart breaks for no doubt she loved Samuel to the ends of the earth like a grandmother would. I do not deny her love pure grandmother love for that boy because i see it in that press conference i see it i see it she loved that boy and i believe she loves her son but i think that she's been enabling him and, and this situation with his boy and i think that's wrong do i think she criminally should be charged i don't know but i think she's wrong and I think that if this doesn't wake her up, this woman's in some pretty heavy denial. And screw this roommate who had this little boy in his bathtub for two days and didn't do anything. Oh, sorry, he did do something. He went to the freaking Walmart and bought things to wrap him up and shove him in a tote bag and then zip strip it. Then this girl let this body lay in this storage unit for two weeks. Two weeks. And then the, the friend takes her there, unknowing what in the hell they're doing. She gets this tote bag that smells so bad. Did this, I mean, 
obviously these people are on drugs. Okay, so Teresa obviously is a drug induced mind mind frame, but did she not think that this friend would put two and two together? Did she was she panicking? Was she thinking they're on to her? I mean, I, I just don't under I don't understand any of this and I don't understand why she killed him. Bring him back to grandma. Garbage bags inside a tote container. I thought it was a tote bag. Sassy VT mom says, COVID or not, mom didn't fight for her son. All it would have taken is a call to police asking for an escort to retrieve her child. I don't know if it's that easy. I don't know if it's that easy. Um, This happens a lot. And it's, it's hard to find a child when you don't know where they are. Now, I don't know what happened all of 2020. Okay, so I can't speak for that. However, I do have someone who's going to come on and show us all the documents from 2020. So I don't know that this woman didn't fight for her son. For all intents and purposes, she could have been fighting for her son. We all know the system fails, kids, every day. Every day. So it's not far-fetched to believe that in the middle of a global pandemic that her case might have gotten shoved to the side with many others. Amanda broke the picture of the tote. Is that the black tote? I think I've seen it. Um, oh, it just that makes me so mad. But I don't think we can attack the mother because we don't know what she did or didn't do. You respectfully disagree about what, Wise Corner? What? They had joint custody that was in their divorce decree. So I don't know if you can call a police officer over and say, hey, here's my divorce decree. Don't go get my kid. I don't think it works that way. I think you have to go to court. And I think that's what I've heard she was trying to do. Cobb said last time she physically tried to get him, she caught a charge for trying to hit Dalton with her car. Sassy says, I know personally, my ex and I shared custody with my oldest son. Tried this crap. I retrieved my son in court, warned him if tried again, would throw him in jail for contempt. It depends where you are. Oh, God, I had those black things with the yellow top. I have some of those. I agree, Cheryl, but we don't know what she did or didn't do. We don't know if she tried that and so maybe something happened. We don't know. Or maybe they couldn't find him. If you don't know where he is, how do you tell the cops where to go? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to place blame on this bio mom. Not at this juncture. Nope. Not doing it. Not doing it. She divorced this Dalton. She got joint custody of her son. She's saying through her attorney that the the paternal grandmother and the father were not in contact with her. They were not responding to her. And I don't know. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with um I'm not I'm not attacking the bio mom. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
Okay, so let's go back here. So um, they're saying here that they did an interview with a doctor and said they may, it may take a while for them to uh, determine the cause of death. Um, I'm going to play that video right now. Your skin, it works overtime. Sometimes it needs help keeping everything in balance. That's where Tula Skin Care comes in. All of Tula's products are made with clean and effective. These ads are the longest ads ever, ever in the course of history. 30 second ads. At you. Feed your skin the yeah, good we stuff. We need to have compassion Tula. for the bio mom right now. Uh oh. Is sound. Sound would be good here. Samuel Olson, but one person who may have answers is back in Houston tonight. ABC 13 was there this morning as Teresa Balboa was transferred from Jasper to the Harris County Jail, and she is still there tonight after a judge set her bond at a half a million dollars. Balboa didn't appear in court today. She was in the mental health unit, but the charge against her was read. The judge said if Balboa makes bail, she will be under house arrest 24 hours a day, seven days a week, deeming her a flight risk. And what about little Samuel? Well, now we await the autopsy. And as ABC 13's Micah Hatfield learned today, it is likely going to take some time, huh, Micah? Absolutely. Good uh, Good evening, Gina. Like you said, Teresa Balboa is back here in the Harris County Jail, but she's only charged with tampering with evidence. No one has been charged here in Harris, uh, here for little Samuel's death. How did he die? Was he ill and passed away? Was he killed? If so, how? There's a chance that we may never know. What happened in Samuel Olson's final moments? The question so many are asking. An autopsy will be performed on the five-year-old, but will doctors be able to determine what happened inside of that Southeast Houston apartment, considering court documents say he died on May 10th? Dr. Paul Radelat, who has performed about 2,000 autopsies, says it can be difficult, but not impossible. If you got broken bones, like a skull fracture and that sort of thing, that would still be there. That would not be difficult to determine. If he was smothered, it would be virtually impossible. If he drowned, I think it would be extremely difficult. We walked him through some of the details in the charging document, like the fact that the body had been wrapped in plastic for weeks and kept in a storage unit. It would tend to contain heat, which in a body that's de decomposing, heat is the enemy. What about the bruises that Teresa Balboa's male roommate reported seeing on the child? Will they still be there? The bruises would probably be there and they'd be discernible. It would be difficult to say how long they've been there. Will the pathologist take into account details given to police during interviews? You, the pathologist, tries to get as much ancillary information as possible because typically it's helpful. But only time will tell. We don't have a time frame right now on when that autopsy will be completed. Micah Hatfield, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Birthdays are back and better. That damn cake. Um, okay, so we know that his body, from what the witness, uh, the accomplice, I should say, not witness, the accomplice said the roommate said that his body was covered in bruises. I have to imagine they're going to be able to determine his cause of death. And I disagree, not that I'm a professional by any means, but I disagree with what that doctor said about not being able to tell if he was smothered or any other kind of um, cause of death. If you think back to the Watts case, those girls were smothered and they were found in oil and they still were able to conduct an autopsy and confirm the cause of death. 
why couldn't they do it in this case? I understand the decomposition, but I just feel like they're going to be able to determine. Um, I want cake, Faith. <laughs> All right. I want to watch Dalton's interview because I have not seen it yet. That is the only thing I think I haven't seen now as far as, oh, no. Okay, so we have actually, I'm going to play this first. We have the raw video of the Houston Police Department, and this is from June 2nd. This is the day after his body was found. We have a 14-minute presser with the chief. I think she's the chief. Yes, Assistant Chief, Heather Morris. So they did mention in that last news clip that is it possible that he was ill and died and not murdered? But then you go back to the bruising. I can't get past the roommate saying that he was bruised. But how do we know that the storage unit wasn't climate controlled, number one? And number two, whose storage unit was it? Do we know whose name it was in yet? Probably not. Yeah, Alexis, I agree. There had to be a stench coming from that storage unit. Cake maker, don't be the cake Nazi. That's going to, you're going to have to change your name to cake Nazi. So Dalton supposedly was working a lot. All right, we'll watch Dalton, but I want to watch this chief. And then we'll watch Dalton's interviews. Good morning. My name is Heather Morris. I'm the assistant chief of the Criminal Investigations Command. And I wanted to start off um, here today by uh, letting you know that I'm going to be providing some information um, on this investigation. Um, a missing uh, five-year-old boy, Samuel Olson, now six. But to start off, I just wanted to say that there's a lot of investigative work that's necessary in this investigation that still needs to be done. So I'm going to be providing some, some broad details about what happened and uh, kind of connecting some dots and how we got here today. Uh, but just to start off, uh, there's a lot of details I'm not going to be able to share because this is an active uh, investigation and there's going to be some things that we're really going to need to get right um, you know, to be able to you know, follow this thing up. So I wanted to start off also by introducing uh, my team that I have with me here this morning. I've got Commander uh, Null of the Homicide Division, and also I have uh, Missing Persons Investigators of the Major Assaults Family Violence Unit um, here with me, and I'll start off. I've got um, uh, Officer Sean King, I've got um, Officer Brian Fort, I've got Officer Danny Doe, I've got um, uh, Officer Martha Bailey, uh, Sergeant Brendan McCord, and Officer Darren Busey. Uh, there's also, uh, I, I just can't say enough about this amazing team that's standing behind me and the, you know, the work that they've done on this case. You know, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the work of all of these investigators behind me, as well as some additional investigators as well that are not here because uh, they're out actively still uh, working this investigation. And so I've got, I want to acknowledge uh, Sergeant Persard um, and uh, Sergeant Grimes uh, and Officer Crowder and Officer Vinagrat excuse me, Mr. Vinogradov, and uh, Sergeant Brady and Sergeant Casso. And all of these investigators um, have done just an amazing, phenomenal job, and there's still, you know, still a lot of work to be done. But our hearts go out um, to the family members of Samuel. Uh, we are very, very saddened by the events that have brought us here today. It's just an absolute tragic event, um, and our prayers go out to the family. So we've asked everybody here today to provide in, um, information on the investigation of six-year-old Samuel Olson, who was reported missing to HPD on Thursday, May 27, 2021, at approximately 6 p.m. Patrol officers were dispatched to a residence in the southwest part of town where they met the father of Samuel, Dalton Olson. Also at the residence was Mr. Olson's girlfriend, Teresa Balboa. 
Mrs. Balboa told the officers on the scene that she was at the residence the morn that morning at approximately 7 a.m. when she saw Samuel's mother with an unknown officer at the front of the residence. Ms. Balboa indicated that the officer told her that she would go to jail for kidnapping if she did not return Samuel to the mother. Ms. Balboa indicated that she recognized Samuel's mother because she had seen her before. Ms. Balboa told the officers that Samuel's mother and the officer left in separate vehicles. Ms. Olson told the officers that once he heard Mr. Olson told the officers that once he heard this story from Ms. Balboa, he contacted Samuel's mother and she told him that Samuel was not with her. Missing persons investigators be began working this investigation and made contact with Samuel's mother. Through investigative efforts, they were provided evidence that Samuel's mother was at her residence throughout the entire morning of May 27, 2021. Investigators continued to follow up on this case, doing everything investigatively possible to find Samuel. Their investigative efforts included in part interviews with Ms. Balboa, Mr. Olson, Samuel's mother, and others. Missing persons investigators discovered inconsistencies in Ms. Balboa's statements and consulted the homicide division. From that point, a collaborative effort was conducted by both the missing persons unit and homicide investigators. Also, Texas EquiSearch assisted in searching multiple locations. A search warrant was obtained for the residence in the 15,000 block of the Gulf Freeway. This is the residence where Ms. Balboa was living. On Monday, the search warrant was executed by investigators and the Houston Forensic Science Center collected evidence from that location. That evidence will be processed and analyzed for its forensic value. Also, a 2012 Dodge Avenger was towed from that location to also be searched and analyzed for evidence. Yesterday, investigators were contacted by Jasper Police Department and they were notified that, that they had received an anonymous tip from Crime Stoppers that led law enforcement officers to a motel in Jasper, Texas in connection with this investigation. Jasper Police Department officers initiated contact at the motel with Ms. Balboa and eventually discovered the body of a young child. Ms. Balboa was taken into custody. At this time, we believe the child to be Samuel, but we cannot confirm that it is him until the medic medical examiner makes that determination. The Texas Rangers took lead on the investigation and homicide investigators traveled to the location to continue their follow-up. At this time, the Harris County District Attorney's Office has accepted charges of tampering with evidence against Ms. Balboa. Once this case has been fully investigated, investigators will be presenting the case to the District Attorney's Office for additional charges if appropriate. In addition to the investigators that I've already identified uh, today, and again, I just want to, I just can't say enough how proud I am of their work and all the efforts that they put into this investigation. Um, but there are other people that help with this investigation, so I just wanted to thank um, some people that I know that have been involved in this investigation, and some of those are Texas EquiSearch, Tim Miller, and all of his people um, that he has with him, the Harris County District Attorney's Office, uh, specifically Samantha Connect that worked with our investigators to get um, search warrants, the Texas Rangers that helped out at the scene last night, Jasper Police Department, the Jasper County Sheriff's Office, the Jasper County District Attorney's Office, um, our Houston Forensic Science Center, um, and it also Crime Stoppers. Um, I um, would like to open it up for questions, uh, but again, a lot of the details I'm not going to be able to provide information on just because of the seriousness and the investigation um, and the ongoing, um, ongoing investigation. So if somebody has any questions. There, there was So we know that the last day that Samuel was in school was April 30th. So other than that, we're not gonna, we don't have the information yet as far as when was the last time that he was actually, that he was actually seen. So that's a big part of what we're doing right now and the conversations we're having right now uh, to determine when that was. But April 30th was the last day he was in school. And what stage? Or anything like that? 
Right. So I'm going to leave that um, for the, um, you know, once the, you know, medical examiners have, have done their, uh, you know, done the work on that and, and um, not get into the specifics uh, on that. And mainly because, um, you know, a lot of that we don't have yet. We just, we just don't have it until that medical examiner uh, is able to, um, to do their part. Because we have law, but law says anything? So um, she has been talking to investigators because, like I said, we had some inconsistent stories. So we have talked to her multiple times, and that's going to be, that's going to be ongoing. So McAvoy was the location where uh, Ms. Balboa reported Samuel missing from. And so obviously that's a place that, you know, we have an, have an interest in. Um, as far as anything else there that led us to Jasper, McAvoy doesn't have any connection at this time that we know of um, to that. What led us to Jasper was the Crime Stoppers tip that came in uh, letting Jasper PD know uh, that uh, Ms. Balboa was there at that location in a motel there in Jasper. And that Dodge, uh, excuse me if I mm -hmm. missed this, that Dodge, do you believe that it belonged to her? Do you know that we we believe that that was a vehicle that she primarily drove. Okay, but we don't think she, it belonged to her. As far as the actual ownership, uh, n you know, no, but that is a vehicle she primarily drove. Well, I do. I can confirm that Ms. Balboa is out on bond currently. For what? That would be for a assault with intent uh, impeding breath. Was there a protective order against the dad, Dalton Olson? I am not aware of a protective order. But let me look. Protective order. A protective order. Okay. No. From Ms. Balboa with Dalton, the dad. The there may have been there may have been some conditions of the bond, but specifically a protective order. I'm not aware of one. So she was on bond on an assault charge against him? Against the father of Sam, uh, Samuel's father. Uh, how did she get to the motel in Jasper? Was she with anyone? So we are, we're still investigating that, um, and we have additional people that we're talking to. I don't want to get into details, you know, as far as, as that goes, because uh, I think it would be very premature. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're talking to... Um, you know, we have several other people we're talking to. Do you know if the child was already at that motel and she arrived there after, or? So I would probably hold off on that one. Uh, and again, that's going to play out. We'll, you know, as we go through the investigation, we'll be able to, you know, shore up a lot more details on that. Do you have any motive why she would take him, why Jasper, why the hotel? Is there a motive behind this? I mean, it's so heartbreaking. <laughs> It is absolutely hard. Is absolutely heartbreaking, um, absolutely. And as far as a motive, we, you know, no, we do, we do not have a motive at this point in time. Is there anybody else you're looking as a person of interest? Anybody else you're looking to take into custody? So we do have other people that uh, we have an interest in in talking to in this investigation. Um, as far as charges, you know, we're not, you know, we're not there um, as far as charges go, and um, so. Uh, but we do have additional people we're talking to, definitely. But, but that's not the father of the child included in those types of interests? So uh, it, I think that um, I'm not going to say that um, the father is a person of interest, but he's definitely somebody that, that um, you know, we can continue to talk to and get information from. How many would you say are people of interest? Um, I don't, I really couldn't say exactly, um, but there are several people that we you know, that we're interested in talking to uh, additionally. How was Samuel brought in from the car into the motel? Um, can you say that again? How was Samuel transported from the car into the motel? So um, we are working on, uh, we've, you know, surveillance evidence, you know, from the hotel. And so we'll, we'll, that'll play out once we, you know, do further investigation. Can you reiterate what she was uh, taking, into, what charges she was taken into custody on? And you're, Okay, um, so she is on bond for a case from November, yes. from November of last year. Okay, okay and that's the assault uh, uh, with intent to um, pee breath. Okay. 
uh, and that's the one where Samuel's father, uh, Dalton, Bel um, Dalton um, Olson, uh, was the uh, complainant in that case. Currently, um, she's on bond for that case. The DA's office here in Harris County has accepted charges for tampering with evidence at this time. And again, once we do more investigation, uh, you know, and if appropriate, we'll be, uh, you know, working with the DA's office to, to pursue additional charges if that's appropriate. And she is in custody right now. She is in custody. She's actually in the Jasper County Jail right now. Okay. And so we're working on finalizing getting our charges uh, filed here. Like I said, the um, Harris County DA's office has accepted charges uh, here in Harris County, and we will be uh, trying to get, you know, working through the process to get her returned to Harris County. We do, we do not, we'll have to wait. That'll, that'll, that'll come from the medical examiner, uh, and, you, know, and, uh, you know, investigation, yeah. Will Ms. Balboa make a court appearance in Jasper County today? You know? I don't have any specifics on that, I do not know. Did Jasper police comment on how Ms. Balboa acted or reacted when she was apprehended? Yeah, I, I do not have that information. The mother in this case, uh, the original, the mom. How uh, Samuel's mother? I'm not aware of any. Um, obviously, as a mother, um, you know, I understand she's, um, you know, extremely upset, but um, I'm not aware of any threats or anything like that. Um, do we know how long Samuel may have been dead? We do not know. And that'll be, that'll be part of our extensive follow-up investigation. Yeah. Any other questions? And folks, please remember he has not been positively identified. Florida Highway Patrol is investigating. All right. Pretty good update there from the chief, though. Um, she did say there's more than one person of interest, and I think at that time she's probably talking about the roommate and the person who called Crime Stoppers and the dad. I mean, they were getting all these conflicting stories. So one conflicting story that I wanted to mention, Leanne Witt brought up in chat. And I pinned it because I wanted everybody to see it. The dad didn't speak to Sam for almost two weeks. He was dead on the 10th because roommate saw him. He made a statement that he talked to him on the 24th, but Sam was dead, so how could he have talked to him? B.S. If Dalton said he talked to him on the 24th? Yeah. Mm. But there's a, there's a two-week difference between... I mean, it's not like he's saying, oh, I think it was the 12th. He's saying the 24th. That's like close to Memorial Day. I don't know. Yeah, watermelon. So good. Um, all right. I want to watch Dalton now because I have not seen him at all. The only thing I've seen was him and Teresa standing next to each other. So let's watch Dalton. Apparently he was bombarded by social media commenters too. Did you guys know that? We'll watch that too. And then we also have the neighbors um, who live next door to Sam Olson. We have a, we have an interview of them too. Okay, so where is this video? He says I can barely breathe, but that's not the video.
Here it is. Okay. Mm. And first here at five, a heartbreaking turn in the disappearance of six year old Samuel Olson. Houston police announcing today a body found in a motel last night is believed to be that of the young boy. It's a twisted and tangled story that we've been keeping you up to date with since Memorial Day. A woman is in custody, we are learning, and she is the boy's father's girlfriend charged with tampering with evidence. Our Maria Salazar joining us live now from HPD headquarters with the latest. That's right, Rashi and Jonathan. She's been identified as Teresa Malboa, and she was taken into custody yesterday at the motel near Jasper, like as you mentioned, where police believe that they have located this little boy's body. Now, police have said that this was a very challenging case from the beginning because there were so many conflicting stories. So here's a look at the timeline that led up to Balboa's arrest. Friday, April 30th, Houston police say that was the last day then five-year-old Samuel Olson was seen at school in Cyprus. That weekend, Sam's grandmother, Tanya Olson, says he was with her at her Santa Fe home. May 2nd is the last time I physically had my hands on Sam. Sam reportedly felt sick when his father, Dalton, came to pick him up. Dalton told Fox 26 Sam was sent to quarantine at his girlfriend's apartment in Webster because Sam and Dalton lived with a chronically ill family member in Cyprus. On April 27th, around 6 p.m., Dalton and Teresa Balboa report Sam is missing. Balboa reportedly told HPD she last saw him in the 8800 block of McAvoy in Houston. Mrs. Balboa told the officers on the scene that she was at the residence the morn that morning at approximately 7 a.m. when she saw Samuel's mother with an unknown officer at the front of the residence. Ms. Balboa indicated that the officer told her that she would go to jail for kidnapping if she did not return Samuel to the mother. HPD report their investigation showed Sam's mother, Sarah Olson, did not leave her home that morning, May 29th. That's not what I wanted to see. We did kind of watch something similar to that already, but I want to see Dalton, so let me... Let me find his interview. They just like skimmed by him. Okay. Um interviews. Okay, here we go. Let me see. This is on someone else's channel though. I don't want to play that. And we're gonna continue to search until we find him. What do you think? Where do you think he could be? Oh, here we go. I think I've got zero it. Zero in now on the girlfriend of little Sam Olson's father. Her name is Teresa Balboa. She's the person who claims to have last seen the boy five days ago. And today, Houston police tried to get answers from Balboa's mother. Roseanne Aragon continues our live team coverage tonight. She is live outside Balboa's mother's home in southwest Houston. Roseanne, we understand that woman just arrived back home. So what did she have to say about all these new developments? Right, I spoke with Teresa Balboa's mother who says police came to talk with her late last night just to see if she was okay. She just got home. She had no idea about the latest developments and had no idea that police were trying to get in touch with her today. In southwest Houston, a police presence here on McAvoy Drive near Birdwood Road. We've seen activity. I've seen police cars around, which is good. For hours Tuesday, Houston police waited to attempt a search at the home of Teresa Balboa's mother here in southwest Houston. Balboa is the girlfriend of Samuel Olson's father, Dalton Olson. Today, Dalton's mother, the paternal grandmother of Sam, spoke out. Dalton is not a bad father. He would never harm that baby. He loves him to death. 
He would die for him. Police today efforted getting more information from Balboa's mother's home and from neighbors. But investigators didn't get far. No one was home. No search. Neighbors, though, welcome the investigation. I think it's important to get as much backstory as they possibly can. Now, Dalton, uh, excuse me, Balboa's mother tells me that she has not heard from her daughter since yesterday and says that she's always with Dalton, so she just assumed that was the case. Reporting live from Southwest Houston, Roseanne Aragon, KPRC 2 News. Thank you, Ray. The body who investigators believe is Samuel Olson has been brought to the Harris County Medical Examiner's Office to be positively identified, even though police cannot say for sure. Wow. Okay. So her mother spoke with a reporter. Interesting. I still haven't seen Dalton, though. I can't find his video. Oh, man. I want to see this guy's video. Oh, I think the father of Samuel it. Olson with a message. No, this is a good one though. They talked to the neighbor. Let's watch this. The father of I'll Samuel Olson with a message after a whirlwind of developments unfolded just over the past 48 hours. Remember, Dalton Olson's girlfriend mm -hmm. is Teresa Balboa. She's the one charged with tampering with evidence in connection with this case. Yeah, but Samuel's father says despite the claims against Balboa, he had nothing to do with the boy's disappearance. Our Jonathan Martinez continues our live team coverage now with what the boy's father had to say through his attorney tonight. Jonathan? Yeah, Chris, and through his attorney, that little boy's father said again, he did not have anything to do with his son's disappearance and presumed death. He is shaken by everything that's happened. Of course, the family is mourning right now. Also this evening, we spoke to the residents at this apartment complex where that little boy's body is believed to have been for days. As new details about the body of a child found at a Jasper motel believed to be that of six-year-old Samuel Olson come to light, his father Dalton, through his attorney, denies being involved, saying, quote, he had nothing to do with the death of his son and that the family is in mourning, shocked, and in disbelief. Olson's attorney also saying right now they're wanting answers as to what happened and why. Teresa Balboa, who's Dalton's girlfriend, has been charged with tampering with evidence in the case. According to court documents, it's believed the child's body was in an apartment in the Webster area for days that Balboa shared with the roommate before allegedly being taken to a storage facility and then to Jasper. It's crazy that something like that can happen so close, especially with having a newborn. Like, I couldn't imagine like losing my kid. A next door neighbor who also happens to be a new mother recalls seeing police in the area and is in shock about what happened. I was hoping that the baby boy was returned home safe and sound and now I'm just hoping for justice for the family. With many questions still unanswered about the case, his attorney says right now Dalton is with family and friends as they process what's happened. And again tonight, many are hoping those questions will be answered through the ongoing investigations and court proceedings to come. We are reporting live from the Webster area. I'm Jonathan Martinez, KPRC 2 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Our coverage of the Samuel Olson case extends on clicktohouston.com. We have posted more information from the court.
A heartbreaking ending today in the search for little Samuel Olson. The dinosaur-loving six-year-old found dead in room 106 at a Texas Best Western Motel 130 miles from home. Police say they are questioning a possible suspect in Samuel's disappearance and death. In police custody is Samuel's father's girlfriend, Teresa Balboa. She was found in the motel room with Sam's body stuffed inside a tote bag. It is absolutely heartbreaking. Um, absolutely. And as far as a motive, we, you know, no, we do, we do not have a motive at this point in time. The girlfriend has been under suspicion since giving a bizarre TV interview, claiming that Sam had been abducted by his mother and a guy posing as a cop. I was going to take Sam to school when his mother showed up with a police officer, what I was under the impression to be a police officer. And they demanded me to release Sam. They said I would go to jail because I have no rights to him, so I had to I had no choice but to hand him over. She stood side by side with Samuel's father, Dalton, as he made an emotional appeal for his son's safe return. I just want to bring my, home, my son home safely. Him and bring him back. I, I, I can't even think, I can't sleep, I can't hold down any food. I just, I'm just concerned because that's the most important thing in my whole life. Micah Hatfield is a reporter with KTRK TV in Houston. She called Samuel her baby. She said that she worked with him on his schooling. Um, she told us that he called her super mommy. We didn't see many tears from her during that time. Samuel's devastated grandmother joined in the search for the boy who loved the movie Toy Story. Everybody loves you and misses you. <laughs> And we're going to see you soon, honey. I promise. I promise, Sam. I promise. As the investigation continued, the girlfriend's story began to fall apart. It turns out Samuel hadn't been seen in a month. I can't say where he could be, where he might be. Yesterday, the girlfriend reportedly vanished from sight. A tipster spotted her at the Best Western and called cops. Balboa has been charged with interfering with a corpse. But more serious charges are expected. Are you ready to get lively? With over a million already. All right. So, yeah, I mean, we're watching some older stuff, and it may not be correct now, but... um. Nonetheless, we're taking it all in. Here's another video. This is um, neighbors who live next door to Samuel Olson. Let's see what this is about. There's a lot of people talking in this case. But Houston police say the last death time he was Samuel seen by Olson. anyone other than tonight, his family was on April 30th at school. The girlfriend of Samuel's bond. father, and Teresa Balboa, told investigators Samuel's that she handed the boy over to his mother on May 24th, when she says Teresa the child's Balboa mother showed up at her County house with a police officer. Morning, Authorities say Samuel's Samuel mother didn't he know where he was, and their investigation showed that she had been at home the entire day. While the investigation is ongoing, investigators say an anonymous tip led them to search a motel more than 100 miles away in Jasper, Texas, where they found a child's body in one of the rooms. I got two things playing again. Let me figure, let me figure this out. Was this the one I wanted to play? Yeah, the neighbor thing. Okay, what else is playing? Oh, Inside Edition. For the love of what's holy, let's try this again. Teresa Balboa is the only person charged so far in connection with the disappearance and apparent death of Samuel Olson. And tonight she sits in a Harris County jail on a $500,000 bond. And we're getting new insight into the final days of Samuel's life before he disappeared. Here's Janelle Bluda. 
Teresa Balbo was brought here to Harris County Jail early this morning. Neighbors who saw Samuel last say he was a normal, happy kid, and they're still in shock. His life likely ended in such a tragic way. At the end of this street, on the corner of this quiet neighborhood. He'd run with his dad. He'd play with his dad. He was laughing, smiling. Is where police believe Samuel Olson spent the last few weeks of his life. Finds a normal little boy. Jeez. They believe his body was found Tuesday night at a motel room in Jasper, Texas. I think everyone wants to know why. Why would someone do that to a innocent child? Donnie and Natalie Wichikoski live across the street. You know, I seen them out in the yard playing and, and, and walking, you know, down the street. So I. To me, it seemed like a good relationship. From the home where Sam and his father Dalton lived for a short time with a family friend. He told me that this was Dalton and, and him and his little boy are living with me for right now. The neighbors say they often saw the two playing in the front yard in Dalton. Seemed like a nice guy to me. Frequently walked Sam to school at Holbrook Elementary, which was just around the corner. They just seem like a normal, happy father-son duo. I mean, I never saw anything suspicious. Police say Samuel was last seen at that school April 30th, but wasn't reported missing until May 27th. They believe he died more than two weeks earlier. Dalton's girlfriend, Teresa Balbo, was arrested at the Jasper Motel, charged with tampering with evidence. She had a court appearance today, but did not physically appear as she was in the jail's mental health unit. Houston police say Samuel's father is not a person of interest, but he's someone they say they're still interested in talking to. However, these neighbors say they don't believe he was involved. I truly don't think that not a new like I really don't. Today, court documents show Balboa was headed to Louisiana with the body. She has her next court appearance on Monday. Reka. As we get, the more disturbing all of this really is, and it's not over yet. Janelle, thank you. Okay, so it appears that Dalton did have a press conference scheduled over the weekend that he canceled. So I can't find his interview anywhere. Maybe this is a... Because you guys said he spoke no out when tonight. he was missing, uh, right? Nope, that's not it. I'm I am bound and determined. He spoke out through his attorney over the weekend. Okay, let's see if this is the... I'm looking, guys, because I'm trying to find... See, they just keep showing clips of it, but not him actually talking. Yeah, his attorney spoke out and said he had nothing to do with the death of his son. That's the attorney's statement. But it does not appear that that interview is anywhere anymore. Oh, wait, I think I may have found something here. Uh, I found it. Hold on. I found... Yes, I found it. This is Fox 26.
Okay, hold on. I'm getting it. All right, let me turn off captions. Hold on, you guys. I'm getting this situated. Mm. I don't know why I'm having issues. I'm so sorry. Hold on. I really want to watch this, though. Like, really, really want to watch it. <laughs> Bear with me, folks. Bear with me. Bear with me. My screen is effed up. Um. Anyways, you guys, I saw you guys talking about podcasts. I think they were just saying, like, that should be a joke. That was like a joke for the podcast. For those that were. Okay, here we go. Let me make this bigger. It won't let me make it bigger. Are you kidding me? Hold on. We may just have to watch it small like that. Whatever. Okay. That's all I can do right now. I just want to see it. So, here we go. First off, if you say your name, spell it for me. My name is Dalton Olson, D-A-L-T-O-N-O-L-S-O-N. -O -O Dalton, this must be some rough times. Can you tell me what it's been like? <laughs> I feel like I'm living in a nightmare I can't wake up from. No parent should ever have to feel this. this is, I can't eat, I can't sleep. I'm, I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words, man. I understand. Have the police told you anything or, or given you any... <laughs> Uh, we're doing our best right now to get out there and search for him. We're trying to cooperate and give them everything. We've given them everything that we can. Any little information we think is important or even as insignificant as we think it is, we still hand it over. So we're just trying to do everything we can to play our part to help bring my son home safe because that's all that matters at the end of today is, is please help me find my son. What was your son's name? His name is Samuel Olson. He just turned six years old on the 29th. He has a little bit of shaggy hair on top, shorter on the sides. Yeah. And um, you said you're going to be passing out some flyers. Yes, sir. We're, we're all in the area. Yeah. Uh, we've been in the Pasadena LaPorte area passing out flyers. Um, right now, we're over here on the southwest side of Houston passing out flyers. We're going to go to the area where he, he was last seen, and we're going to pass out flyers. I mean, in, anywhere we can just hand out anything for somebody if they've seen something. I mean, any little bit of information will help. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank I you so much. It. So I don't know if there's more. Okay, that is all I could find. Um, he seems very distraught to me. I don't think that this dude ever intended or wanted his child dead. I really don't. That's just my gut. That's just my gut feeling. I feel like, I don't know what I feel like. I, I honestly feel like he in whatever frame of mind he was in or is in because of what he does. I don't know if he does drugs or people say he was working a lot, blah, 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 whatever. He was obviously distracted by something. But... Yes, me too, Robin. Me too. So he he reported Samuel missing, Dalton and Teresa together. 
reported the child missing. She called him and said that the bio mom had shown up at her mother's home with a cop and that they took the boy. He called the bio mom. She said, I don't have him. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think he's, you know, father of the year by any means, but he is definitely distraught. What did Candy A say? He talked to his son on the 22nd. If he turned six on the 29th, why not talk to him then? Mm, good point. Good point. But the fact that no one was keeping track of this child, he didn't have a stable home. These people were all over the place with this kid. And, and the bottom line is this kid deserved better. And if his bio mom could have provided better and the system failed her, then there's a huge problem. And I don't know that for a fact, but for all intents and purposes, his bio mom didn't do anything wrong in this case. We don't have any information on that. So, all right, guys, we have gone. Oh, my gosh, this has been the longest timeline ever. But we were very thorough. And I thank you guys, everybody in chat, not only for being here and, and walking through this timeline with me, but for all of your input and and walking this through this is why i love doing this this is why i love my channel i love interacting with you guys and researching cases and we haven't done this in so long and it just it feels good it feels good and i want to thank everyone who took part in it today and we will continue following this case from this point forward and if you guys didn't see her quick appearance in court we did stream that it was like over in a hot minute but Thank you guys for being here for this timeline. I know it was lengthy, but you guys were great. And I will see you guys all soon. And on your way out, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you guys real soon.